Well, welcome back. To Peace Presbyterian 3B. I was wondering if anybody noticed that they were using the the hip hinging. Great. Yeah, it was just pure luck though. It was just it was just pure luck. I just happened to be like, yeah, I'm doing it. This is cool. Wow, so it just happened. Hmm. <laughs> I well I noticed myself using it more. Just just because we were talking about it. Okay, let us pray. Thank you, God, for bringing us here safely. Thank you, God, for protecting us, for covering us your, with your wings of protection. We just thank you, God, for blessing our session today, keeping everyone safe, and helping everyone in the ways that they need it most. And we just thank you, God, for being with us and always protecting us and always blessing us. In Jesus' name, amen. This is just, we, I, I still put the song in there, but I put, instead of singing, I have a recording of myself singing so we could still be safe. <laughs> so I know singing is more risky. And I thought afterwards, you know, I, we, I cut out the walking part just because then we can just keep our six feet apart. But um, if, we, if people want to, they can walk outside afterwards and visit outside afterwards. I think it should be a little warmer by the time we get out. And then, as always, follow your doctor's instructions and stop if you're feeling pain or straining and change, change the way you're exercising if you feel pain or straining. Okay, today we have a warm-up. We have a hip, hip hinging warm-up. So this is just almost exactly like standing up and sitting down with your nose over your toes, except instead of sitting all the way down, we're going to stop and then stand back up before we get to the chair. So if you can do it as small or as big as you want. And then for a challenge, you can reach forward if you want a challenge. Yep, and you can use your armrests too if you need it. Yep. All right, good. And now this is our, our scripture for today. Psalm 23. I thought this was this is really comforting. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your, rat, your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I like that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I thought about COVID and viruses, and that, that could be our enemy. That God is blessing us in the midst of, of all of this. 
Okay, so instead of walking around the circle today, I added walking in place. And so we could, you could walk in your chair while you're sitting, or you could stand up and hold the chair and walk in place there. And then if you want to challenge, or, or you can slide a foot, slide the piece of paper on the floor with your foot. That would be another way. Or you could step out and in. Or you could march in place. Yeah. Not quite as fun as walking around the circle. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Midnight Express is a movie, but this one guy decided to walk the other way around to unwind. <laughs> to un oh, wow. So you wind up and then you unwind when you go backwards. <laughs> that music might help a little bit. Probably good. It's a, walking in place is harder than going around the circle. Yeah. There. Okay. Okay. This is this is my tip, physical therapy tip of the day. Well, it could be used for much more than physical therapy, but. I'm learning about the value of taking rest breaks. And rest breaks are kind of countercultural. You know, we, we're taught to finish our work and then play, you know, get it all done and then, and then rest. But I've found over the years, and I, <clears throat> I learned this from a physical therapist that had, had polio, so he really had to learn how to manage his energy level. And, and he taught me that he, he would work, and then when he would start to feel tired, even just the inkling of feeling tired, he would stop, close his eyes, even turn the lights off in his office and take some deep breaths. And a minute or two later, he would go back to working, and he would do that all day long. And so he said if he did that, he could work 12 hours. But if he didn't do that and he just pushed himself to keep working, he'd have to be in bed after four hours. So, but I've, I've found that that even works if you don't have something like that. You know, just, just learning to stop and take little rest breaks when you feel tired. And it could, it could even just be that it's harder to think or it's harder to do what you are doing. You know, that could be a sign of being tired or... Um, just that you're kind of taking a big sigh. You know, just all of those could be it, indications that you're starting to get tired. And I had, I had worked with someone that was having trouble um, grocery shopping. And so she would rush through the grocery store as fast as she could to try to get finished before the before she got tired and and then she would be so tired that she couldn't sit up in the car on the way home she had to lie down and then she couldn't she just had to get into bed when she got home and so we tried this you know I had her 
She had a walker, so she was able to sit down in her walker periodically in the grocery store. And she tried resting instead of rushing. Well, she got home and made dinner, sat up in the car on the way home. <laughs> so it was the same amount of work, but just a different, just a different way of doing it. And then there were, you know, some other people tried, instead of vacuuming the whole house, vacuuming one room per day. That was another thing that seemed to work. And then if you don't have a walker, you could just lean against the wall, you know, when you're in a store and rest that way. And if you feel self-conscious about stopping to rest, you could just look at your phone. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> oh, you figured out my, my uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, well, we use that when I work with people that are younger and they feel self-conscious about having to rest. <laughs> well, looking at the phone work. <laughs> oh, I got a message. <laughs> uh. Okay, so instead of singing, you know, because we're on more of a uh, different protocol, we probably shouldn't all sing, but I thought we could sing to ourselves as we're doing our in the garden routine, and I recorded myself singing. <laughs> so. Okay, we could, we could just listen for one time, and then we'll go ahead and participate. It's going to keep going. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> It'll keep going forever. That was, that was wonderful. I could hear you singing in my... <laughs> your, your silent singing was loud. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. If anyone has a song they want to do, just let me know. We can... If it's old, we can do it. Because <laughs> there's no rights on this one anymore, so. All right, now this is the, this is the riddle. What do you call 10 rabbits marching backwards? A receding hairline. <laughs> okay, now we're on to the, the regular exercises. After singing, it's like, I want to keep doing that. <laughs> so this is just marching, and you can march sitting down, or you can march standing up. I like to plant, plant my feet into the floor when I'm marching. <laughs> and 
and I thought we could be, imagine that we're marching through the darkest valley and we're safe. Yep. You can stand up and do it. Yep. It's easier. <laughs> it is, it's easier, especially if you have a hip injury. But it also is good for your hips to march. It, it makes you use your, mus your hip muscles more. Yeah, we're practicing our coordination with the, op if, you, if you don't need to hold on, you can practice swinging your opposite arm with your opposite leg. <laughs> oh, you're doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't think about it, sometimes that's when it happens. <laughs> and you could even do mini marching, you know. All right. <laughs> okay, now we're, this one is the, ha the one that stretches our hamstring, straightening your knee out and circling your ankle. And it's good to keep your thigh resting on the chair. You don't have to lift high. And the challenge was doing both at once with opposite or See the same direction. <laughs> That's getting into coordination again. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else, but I had to stretch a lot after our last session. I was doing those hamstring and stretches a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this one feels good. Yeah, it does help you warm your legs up. Yeah. Right, like people that have arthritis, it's good to do things like this before you try to stand up and walk. Even the one where you're sliding your foot on the paper. If you have stiff knees, you know, that can get them warmed up before you stand up. I had a co-worker once that did it in bed before she got out of bed because she was having difficulties. Yep. So she did that exercise briefly in bed and then she get out of bed and walk. Yeah, people, before even getting out of bed, sometimes it helps to exercise in bed. And then when they try to get out, it's easier. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now this one is the, the one where we're resisting our against ourselves, where we squeeze our knees together against the resistance of our hands and then separate our knees against the resistance of our hands. And if you have pain in your shoulders when you do this, you can use the ball between your knees so that you're squeezing the ball instead of having to resist with your arms. And now we have a new item in the bag. It's that stretchy band. And you can put, you, you know, you could put that around your legs and stretch your knees out against that. Yeah. And it helps to kind of wrap the, wrap the TheraBand around itself so that it's easier to hold on to when you're stretching against it. Yeah, it's a little bit. You you get resistance without straining your arms. Yep. <laughs> no, 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 stair band fights. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, above, above the knees is a little bit easier than below the knees. Yeah, that's kind of fun. And if you notice, I have a skinny one because I cut mine in half. So if anybody's band feels too hard, just let me know and I'll cut it. And then we'll have twice as many. <laughs> but see, I went with the, I got the latex free TheraBand. And originally I was not liking these latex free bands because they're harder to stretch. But when I realized, I read somewhere on Google that you could cut them in half. And so, so if it's too hard, well, we can just cut it in half. So now it's just, now it's just fine. But I didn't cut them because I wanted you to, you know, if, if it's just right for you, then we won't cut it. Oh, what is it? It might be three pounds. I had left my box at home. <laughs> this is light resistance. Yep. And for the arms, I, I do like the, this light resistance because sometimes when the resistance is too heavy for the arms, people end up with, with more shoulder pain. So it's, it's better to start easy. And if you need more resistance, well, you could always add another, another band. Yep. Oh, this is, a, this is a new exercise, if you're ready for the next one. So this one is tightening your bottom, your glute, glute muscles, your, your bottom muscles. And, and when you tighten your bottom muscles on one side, it's supposed to lift your hip bone off the chair. Tighten, yeah, it's hard. It is hard to tighten just one bottom. I was struggling with that myself. It's hard to struggle just, I mean, it's hard to tighten just half of your bottom. But what I do is I push my foot into the floor, and it helps to have my non-slip surface too, because then I can feel it more. Where I'm, and it helps to sit back in the back of my chair. And then as I'm put, I'm tightening my bottom as I'm pushing my that foot into the floor. And particularly if you push your heel into the floor, you might feel your bottom tighten more than if you're pushing your toe into the floor. That does help. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that helps. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I learned the push, pushing the foot into the floor. I learned that from some Feldenkrais exercise classes, which is where that you focus on being able to feel what your body is doing. <laughs> Mine tells me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, good, that's good if you can feel what your body is doing. Sometimes we get used to ignoring it especially if we're trying, trying to ignore pain. Yeah. Yep, and then repeat with the other side. So you're tightening the left side of your bottom while you're pushing your left heel into the floor. I'm pushing a, a couple of seconds. It does really help your hips. Like I had in, gotten a, a torn cartilage in my hip, and one of the exercises was trying to tighten my, tighten my hip muscles. I discovered when I went for physical therapy myself that I was not using my gluteal muscles hardly at all. In anything I was doing, I, I was using other muscles. And it, it is. It's, one, it's our strongest and one of the biggest muscles in our body, and, and a lot of us are not using our gluteal muscles because we're sitting a lot, and they just get used to relaxing. How is your hip doing now? It's much better now. I just had to start using my hip muscles. So, do that exercise still continue with 
I, whenever it starts hurting, I remember. <laughs> so you, even physical therapists are not, don't always do our exercises. <laughs> but pain is a good reminder. Yep, and I, and I did, you know, some of the things that I've been teaching you, like the stepping out and in and the hip hinging, those were all part of what I did for, for my hip. And now we have elbow bends. So this is where we start with our hands on our lap and then bend, bend your elbows and then down. And this one, um, the next step is doing elbow bends out here. And if you need a if you need a broomstick, there's lots of them in the corner to use the broomstick. Here's my mine fell on the floor. Right. All right. It, today we're doing a devotional about ha happiness. Martin Luther is said to have insisted that if we don't see the happiness, even in the sadness, we have missed the reality of Christ's redemption of us. And Proverbs 17.22 says, A happy heart is good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. Dr. Carl Menninger once observed, Attitudes are more important than facts. And when you are seeking happiness in life, this is doubly true. How you perceive life will determine life. How others perceive you will reinforce your happiness or your lack of it. Happiness is not a destination. It is a manner of traveling. Happiness is not an end in itself. It is a byproduct of working, playing, loving, and living with Jesus at your side. It comes when you throw yourself wholeheartedly into life, into love, into service. So happiness is found in daily attitudes and activities, the byproduct of a meaningful life. How is your happiness level? And I thought about the psalm that we read today, Psalm 23, about how... Um, you know, even though we're walking through the darkest valley, um, you know, when God is with us, that helps us to be happy, to be, you know, to be at peace in the midst of the storm. So and now we're going to get to our TheraBand, our new, new exercises. And if, if your band feels too hard for you, just stretch until it feels like it's too hard and then back off. You, know, you don't have to go the whole way. You can just go a little bit. Or you could even just resist against it without stretching it, you know, if it's too hard. So this one is keeping your elbows at your sides. And it's going to do with good posture. And then, then we pull our hands apart. Does anyone need a smaller one? I have a small one here. Yep, and if you want double resistance, you can double it up. I see that. <laughs> Good. 
Yeah, so you can, you can even just stretch just a, an inch or less, you know, depending on how, how strong or how hard it is for you. I recommend doing a, a little bit lighter resistance at first, especially because um, if, you're, if you're doing it really hard and straining, you know, you can have shoulder pain later. So it's good to start out easy. Oh, if your hands are close together, you get more of a pull. Yep. But if your hands are farther apart, it's it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. And doing it doing it gently and slow is good. <laughs> And you can also do, for the challenges, you could also do it standing up. And my therapist had me do this with my feet close together or with my feet. <laughs> so those are ways that make it harder. <laughs> I think she wasn't worried I would fall. <laughs> now, if I, was, if I was helping somebody, I would be right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now this next one is, it's similar, but you're, you keep your elbows straight. And again, you don't have to go all the way out. You know, you can just go a little bit. But you can go all the way out if you want to, yeah. And again, these are the challenges. Okay. Now this this is one of my favorite ones. I, well, I like canoeing, <laughs> and so this one is like canoeing with one hand. One hand is holding the theraband steady, and the other hand is is canoeing. Yeah, and you can even look look at that hand that's canoeing back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the upper hand stays steady and the other hand canoes. And again, you can do it small. You know, you could make little paddles. Or you can lower, you know, if it's hard to have your arm up that high, you can have it lower. I see some kayaking too. <laughs> yeah, that's where I like to be, is out kayaking. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to alternate like that. I wasn't I was doing the kayaking. Canoeing, you stay on one side for a while and then canoe on the other side. <laughs> Okay, now this, this we don't have to use the TheraBand. You can if you want to, but it's, it's um, actually for me it's easier without it. Putting, putting your hands together and looking over your shoulder with your elbow. And then when you get to where you can't go anymore, just stopping and holding it. And then looking the other way. And you can have your hands lower down, you know, if it's hard to lift them. I couldn't think of a challenge for this one. <laughs> But I think I think it's better to do this one sitting down than standing up. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, if you look the opposite direction, you get a little bit more of a stretch. And coordination. <laughs> that is, I can feel that, yep. I have to be gentle with that one, though. Not to stretch too far apart. <laughs> Okay, now I, I added my own ideas to this. You know, there's a there's kind of these lesson plans for 3B, and, and the top part was in the manual. The trouble with living alone is that it's always your turn to do the dishes. But I put my, my arguments under there, oh, and it's always your turn to cook. <laughs> but then the positives, but no one complains when it's too messy or too noisy. And no one interrupts your peace and quiet. <laughs> so, I thought, well, there's the, the, po the negatives, but then there's the positives. Okay, now, that, now we're on to a familiar exercise. The inner thigh stretch, so that's you, where you can... Do it sitting down, where you're stretching your leg out to the side. Or you can slide your foot on your piece of paper, out and in. Or you can stretch your inner thigh standing up. Which one do you, you know, I think it's almost harder to do this like this than it is to stand up. I think... I think it's easier to stand up, too. Yeah. Yeah. I feel more of a stretch when I stand up. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, I feel more of a stretch when I do it standing up, too. Yeah. I feel like it's more in my chest. Mm-hmm. No, I think whatever's tight, you'll feel it stretching. So it's okay to feel it stretching in your calf. Or you might feel it more in your hamstring, you know. You could try, if you feel it a lot in your calf, you could try just relaxing your toe. And then you might feel it more in your thigh. Well, it's good to have it high, but not too high because you don't want to be lifting your leg up off the chair. I've been sitting and then your legs apart and really feel it. Yeah, that is a challenge, which I didn't put on there. You could do both legs at the same time. Ooh, yeah, we should add that to the challenges. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> I think that's why it's not on there. <laughs> well, you know, I noticed that these um, folding chairs, some of the exercises that I practice at home feel different on these folding chairs, and I have a little bit harder time doing them. <laughs> yeah, I'll put, add that to the grant. <laughs> Special chairs for 3B. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we have the hamstring stretch. And that one you can do sitting down. I forgot about the ball idea. Somebody had recommended rolling a ball up and down, or you could slide your hand up and down on your leg. But trying to keep your back to keep keeping your back upright is, is good to do on this one. So you're stretching your hamstring and not your back. Yeah. Ooh, that's tighter, isn't it? <laughs> I feel... Yeah. yeah, we might have some sore leg muscles.
Yeah, I can only go back to, down about this far. But don't worry if you can't go down very far, you're still stretching. Yeah, I can't touch my toes either. <laughs> when I was little, I wanted to be like Nadia Komenich, and I, my mom took me to gymnastics, and after a couple of classes, they said, sorry, you can't go any further. <laughs> I, you can't, I couldn't do the splits. <laughs> So I joined cross-country skiing. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we have the stretch for our hip muscles, and that's giving your thigh a hug. And you can, you can have your heel just straight out, or you can cross your heel over, which I like. Yeah. And definitely follow your doctor's recommendations if you had a hip replacement. There's sometimes restrictions. Although there's a new hip replacement now, the an anterior hip replacement, where they make the incision on the front of the leg. And my, da my dad had that, and not, he doesn't have any restrictions. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, my dad was back to work, I think, in two weeks. Yeah. So the things are, some things are advancing. Okay, this is a new one. This is like flutter kicking. And you can do, you can flutter kick one leg while you're planting the other leg into the floor for support. Or you could, for a challenge, you can flutter both legs. This reminds me of swimming lessons. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we'd sit on the edge of the pool and practice. <laughs> hmm. That one's a little hard to do standing up. <laughs> we don't have any volunteers. <laughs> now, like this alternating shoulder shrugs. So you, one shoulder goes down and one shoulder goes up and hold. It's a little bit like our side bending, but now we're do lifting the opposite shoulder. Which it, I feel that one stretching in my shoulder blades. Well, that's a good question. I'm guilty of bending my head. <laughs> Yeah, we, I was having a discussion with someone. It's there's there's a dif differing opinion. Some people are um, really motivated to isolate specific muscles when they exercise, and now with the Feldenkrais exercises, it's more of an idea of integrating your whole body into each movement, so you're not straining anything, and you're using the advantage of all of your body muscles. So I lean toward using my whole body. That's why I tend to, my head tends to go with me. We can try each way and see how it feels, what the difference is. If you do it without moving your head and then try doing it with your head. For me, I feel more straining when I don't move my head. Yes. I think it's best, no matter which way you do it, do it very deliberately, not just accidentally whipping. Oh, doing it deliberately. Yep, Slo slowly and deliberately versus just fast. Yep. Yep, that's a, that is a good point. Yep. Oh, 
oh, this is, this is re putting our hands behind our head and then just stretching our elbows out. And I like to take a deep breath when I do that. And then... And for me, it really helps to plant my feet into the floor when I do this. Otherwise, I start arching my back. Yep, and the challenge was doing it with your arms, your arms straight. And then to make it easier, you can put, keep your hands further down. Yep. I thought of another challenge. You could have your hands up as you do it. And that stretches some more muscles on your chest. Your pec, pec muscles. <laughs> yeah, that looks like one of those weightlifting activities. Yeah, and that for all of these, I need to push my feet into the floor to support my back because my back tries, to, I'm tight here in my shoulders, and so then my back tries to do it. But if I pu push my feet into the floor, then my back is supported and my arms can be, you know, my arms are the ones that are stretching. If I don't plant my feet into the floor, this is what I look like. <laughs> But if I planned it, you know, I'm much, my, back, my back is much taller. You know. Okay, now we go back to our practicing standing up and sitting down with our nose over our toes. I'm so proud. Of every, everyone looks wonderful when they're doing this. Yep, and you can use your hands on your arm rests. And landing softly like an airplane. Great. Yeah, and I see another easy modification. Just, just stretching forward. That could be. That could be an easy modification. Standing up without the, without leaning forward. Right, right. That is a good test. If you. If you try standing up without leaning forward, see how much harder that is. Yep, that is that is a good reminder. Yep. <laughs> I've tried that before when I'm demonstrating to someone the difference, and they had it. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty hard. Okay, now this is uh, neck, just neck range of motion. And I thought about imagining it, you know, as, as we're putting our head down, imagine that God is anointing our head with oil. So looking to the right, looking to the left. Yeah, and this is the one that's good to be deliberate, you know, not moving too fast, just nice and gentle and slow. And the stretches on your neck definitely should be gentle. The neck is, seems to be quite a sensitive, has sensitive muscles. Yeah, looking, looking with your eyes, that's a good way to exercise too. Seems like our eyes help help us move. It's hard to do that without looking. Like it's hard to look to the right. It's hard to turn my neck to the right if I'm not looking to the right. Have you ever yeah. had to do physical therapy with someone that's 
Have I had to do physical therapy with somebody that's blind? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a, there's a lot more verbal explanation. You know, um, before I do something, I, I need to remember to explain what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, I also, I also know people that are blind personally, and that's a, it's something I always need to get used to is just explaining bef before, before I move or before I do something, I need to explain what's happening. Or before I walk away. <laughs> so I left you. <laughs> oh. And this one is if you do it standing up, it's it's a balance challenge. Because look looking different directions while you're standing up changes your balance. Especially looking up. So it's good to keep the chair close by. I can't look up at tall buildings. Mm -hmm. you know, I just, yeah. If you look up at tall buildings, it challenges your balance. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, I've worked with people that fell when they were reaching up for the top shelf of their closet, you know, from looking up. So then what I recommend is touching, touching the wall before they reach up or look up. Yeah. And then the touching helps ground you where you, you know where you are in space. You know, when, when we're looking up, it's a lot of the things that we use for balance are our eyes and our inner ears. Um, and, and those are all thrown off when we're looking up. But if you're touching something, that your sense of touch is still not moving. Yeah. The groomsmen fell over during weddings. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Locking your knees. Yeah, could make you did they faint? They fell during weddings. Oh my goodness. <laughs> standing standing maybe with their knees locked. And, yeah. I thought this was really interesting. Women blink twice as many times as men do. Maybe that's why they didn't fall. <laughs> From birth throughout life, the average woman blinks 13 times a minute. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this, this is just uh, going up on our toes and then onto our heels, and that stretches our calves. Yeah. And the challenge was doing it standing up with it, with my chair. <laughs> There's my hip hinging. I did it. <laughs> yeah, this one really stretches the calves. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you stay up on your heels for a few seconds, that stretches the calves. Yeah. 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 yeah and, and a safety thing is, you know, not to tip too back, too far back. When, you know, if you're going up on your heels and you can't lift your toes up very high, it's best not to tip backwards too far. Just do what you can. This is 
Now oh, this was a, used as a foot exercise yeah. in therapy. You know, um, if it's what I've done before too is if it's hard to go up on the toes and up onto the heels, you could just shift your weight onto your toes and then shift your weight onto your heels. And that still exercises. Yep. And some, sometimes the toes get, especially if you had toe surgeries and things like that, the toes can get pretty sensitive. But just shifting the weight can do that exercise without causing pain. And then this is a toes exercise, stretching your toes out and then curling your toes in. Now, I t this, is, this is the exercise that we had trouble with last time, and I tried a different way of explaining it. So putting, I thought if we sit on the very edge of our seat that that would help. And then stretching forward, and I'm going to use my non-slip mat under my feet. Stretching forward and then pushing pushing yourself up with your feet. So your back is relaxing and your feet are pushing yourself up. It's still hard on these slippery chairs. <laughs> I might need my non-slip mat under my bottom. Let's try that. Oh yeah, that worked. So I put the non-slip mat under my bottom and then I you stretch forward and then push your push with your feet to sit up instead of sitting up with your back muscles. And if and if your back is relaxed, you might notice that your low back goes up first and then your head last. They look like that might have been a little bit better. For me, this having this under my bottom really helped. Oh my goodness. Okay, we'll do one one more. The flicking flicking our hands so we get our fingers exercised. And you can flick all different directions, flicking, flicking love. <laughs> hmm. You can flick up and out. Oh, flicking back. <laughs> Down, yeah. And I had put the, in case anybody needs to stretch out after that. Prayers. Oh, that's the wrong slide. The prayer stretch. I combined the prayer stretch with the finger stretch because I thought those go really well together. There, let's see if we can find the last slide here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's, let's finish by taking our deep breaths. Slow, deep breaths, raising our shoulders up and dropping our shoulders down.
And then if you, if you want to do that um, belly breathing where you're pumping your stomach out and relaxing your pelvic muscles, and then breathing out, pulling everything in. Yeah, it's easier to do, to concentrate with your eyes. Mm-hmm. Then you can also do this uh, lying down, lying down with your legs bent, where you're. Breathing in and relaxing everything, and then breathing out and pulling everything in. But it, it, it is a new coordination thing. It's not, not very natural. And, I, and I'm just remembering Psalm 23, that God is with us. God is protecting us. And we don't have to do arm circles. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be careful what I do, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm believing that we're safe. <laughs> mm-hmm.